good uh, morning and welcome to Dublin City FM. You're look, listening to Council Matters with me, Mick Fitzgerald, and I am delighted to uh, introduce our guest in the studio, which is Councillor Emma Murphy, who's coming all the way from our farm. Emma, welcome to uh, Council Matters and welcome to uh, East Wall. Thanks for having me. Yes. Emma, you're a new uh, addition to Dublin, uh, or South Dublin Council, be, uh, due to the election of John Lahart to uh, the oil air. And how's it been going so far? I suppose it's been a, a bit of a baptism of fire, but um, that's to be expected. Uh, it's been a, um, a quick eight weeks. Uh, we've been very busy uh, from a council perspective. We just passed the development, county development plan on on Monday. So um, yeah, it's been it's been interesting and it's been it's been eventful, but it's um, it's been enjoyable as well. I've, I've enjoyed the first first couple of months. Yeah. Despite the little black dress, Emma, you're not a political ingenue. I gather you've got quite a uh, a political pedigree, but let's go back to the beginning. Sure. Why did you get an interest in politics? And what I always say is, why Fianna Fáil? I suppose that's the question I'm asked all the time, so it's yeah. not really, it, it wouldn't be a kind of a new question. Um, my, I studied history and political science in, in UL um, as my undergraduate degree, but my background really is in international development, and that's my, that would be, uh, that's the day job. Um, I work for for an international NGO, uh, but my interest in Go politics. Go on, mention them. Yeah, okay. I suppose a little plug. Um, it's called Amawali, which uh -huh. means uh, twins in Kosa. We're an Irish South African schools okay. linking organisation. So we've uh, just coming up to a hundred partnerships now with Irish and South African schools nationally. Brilliant. Um, so that would that's my background. Um, I got involved in politics really probably by accident. Um, I was involved in students' union politics a little bit towards the end of. Of my um of my student life, I was postgraduate students union president in UL for a number of uh, for two years, um and then I came back to Dublin in two thousand and ten, and um, my grandmother was ill, and we actually sought assistance from um from local representatives to motor neuron disease, and we were struggling to get a um a facility of uh, that was um amenable to her, um and we got some assistance from Senator Maria Corrigan. And um, so I had a, a, Maria was a senator at the time and I was kind of having a chat with her um, uh, over a cup of coffee one day and it, she asked me would I like to just get involved and see what it was like, um, okay. um, you know, in and around her office and that type of thing while I had, a, I had two months off really uh, between starting my new job and the job that I finished. And I so didn't get so you weren't what I would call a teenage letterbox stuffer? No, yeah. no, no. Yeah. My first involvement in politics is the general election in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, which is a painful experience. Um, it, 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 people say that. I mean, yeah. I suppose it was probably the best, it, the best way to the best way to be introduced to it because it was such a difficult election mm -hmm. that anything after that really, you know, it, it was was progression, and you could see. I mean, people are there. People deserve to be heard, and um, there was a lot going on in the country at the time, and and you know that was something that. 2011 was it was a tough election. It was an mm. awful election for from a weather perspective. I don't think we're ever dry. Mm. Um, and it was, but it was a, it was an interesting experience, and mm. it kind of provoked my interest from there, really. Interesting, because uh, now the reason why I asked that is because some years ago, uh, when I started off covering local government, and they had the dual mandate and they swapped over sort of thing. I inter I interviewed a uh, young woman who was a Fianna Fáil councillor, she was put on Dublin City Council and I asked her the very same question, uh, you know, thinking mm -hmm. she'd say, oh I was enthused by Sean Lamas and my family did and her answer was, for the social life and I was just flummoxed because it never struck me and yet I could understand that. She said, oh yes, as teenagers we all went out and stuffed letterboxes and then we went on picnics and so on. And I could understand that perfectly, but it just never struck me. So, uh, uh, yours, uh, uh, yours seems to be much more ideological in that sense of the word. Is yeah, that I think it, I think it was ideological, and I suppose with um, with everything to do with, I mean, Fianna Fáil took um, a, a bashing in two thousand and eleven, mm -hmm. which is you know very well documented. But I suppose that left uh, gaps for progression, and you know, for people like myself coming through, that you actually can see where you can kind of fit and you can grow and develop. Um, as it in within the political spectrum, I mean, I did take a bit of convincing to be in for to see myself as as the candidate. Uh, that mm. was something that um, took a bit of time with a lot of people on a local basis that would have you know seen something maybe in me and said you know do you, would you like to be involved and you know let's see how how you would you know, work as a local area representative. So I I became a local area representative. Um, actually, I became the secretary of the local organisation in the old Dublin South. Um, mm which kept me involved and I enjoyed that um, but then I was asked would I be a local area representative and that was in 2013 
Um, and I, I, I did struggle with seeing my face on literature. I str- mm. you know, it was something that it was something that I had to get used to. It's something my family had to get yeah. used to as well. Um, I mean, they have no background in mm. you know in what we call professional politics. Mm. So you know, for them to see literature coming through the door or my face driving on the visitor, down the road, driving they, down oh, the road, look, there's Emma again, and there's or, Emma again. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm the oldest of six, so um, I'm yeah. the oldest of six, and um, f- you know, it's great that I have lots of leaflet droppers and posters, uh, mm. posters that get put up and. You know, it is a challenge. You know, for 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 them as well, and even even now, you know, they they're very like they're very proud, and they're they're very mm-hmm. proud when I when I when I replaced John on the council in in March. But it, I mean, it is new to us as a family. Mm-hmm. It's new for people to be stopping my mum in the street and asking, you know, can Emma sort out my tree, or you know, yeah. is there, you know, we've got a pothole outside the house, and um, so they are used to it. They're they're getting a little bit more used to it, but it yeah. it did take me a while. Did you um did you get much abuse on the doors, particularly? Yeah. No, uh, like, uh, and my when people say this to me all the time. You know, do you get a piece in the door? People aren't. That's what I'm there to listen to. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not knocking on a door. Uh, I'm knocking on a door to hear what people have to say. Um, you know, when you knock on a door, you're there to hear people's views. The diff- the diversity mm-hmm. in views helps me be a better public representative. It helps me shape what I'd like to what I'd like to do and what I what I envis- envisage doing going forward. Mm-hmm. So. Anybody can say anything they want to me on a door. That's and I I enjoy that and I enjoy the debate on doors. Um, it was easier uh, as a candidate in twenty fourteen. I was a new candidate as mm-hmm. well, so that's something that you know it it was there in kind of you know the elevator speak that people going to the door. Emma's in your first time candidate. That's yeah. something that did go down well. Mm-hmm. Um, not well enough. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know, well, yeah, not you got there. You got there. You got there in the end. Yeah. But uh, no, not well, not well enough. But you know we. Yeah. Um, it, but it is something that that's there as well, and it, you know we try to be as visible as possible. I've I've a great team behind me as well, and uh, I try to be as visible as I possibly can um, uh, on a localized basis as well for the people of Rathlin. Well, it clearly worked because John Hart got a John the Hart. Uh, John, it, John it, got a, uh, a seat. In, John is uh, Dublin, Dublin, was it Southwest? Dublin Southwest. Yes, yeah, sir. John was a first time general election candidate. Mm-hmm. You know, and John has been in the council since nineteen ninety nine. So. You know, I, I think John's brand and his patience and his dedication and work for the people of Farnham um, and for the people of Dublin South West over the last number of years, it came, tr- it came true to the forefront. And, you know, his election result was was a testament to his hard work, dedication and patience over the last number of years. Yeah. Something I'm going to uh, uh, perhaps ask you to correct to uh, a misperception, and that is is that you, something you would have also canvassed in is the referendum that took place sure. last year. Now I know plenty of people from Fianna Fáil who canvassed and I particularly think of uh, our mutual friend Alan Bracken. A lot of people from uh, Fianna Fáil canvassed uh, for a yes vote. Mm-hmm. I don't think uh, anybody I know canvassed for a no vote in Fianna Fáil, but that's a uh, separate matter. But uh, Avril Power said, oh I'm leaving the party because of the way he's uh, operated in the referendum. How fair was that criticism? I'm not making any comment about Avril herself, but the criticism itself. Avril was uh, is a, a good a good friend and I know Avril well and uh, one of the things I will say that is Avril is not Avril having Avril as a parliamentarian at the moment is is a loss from a national perspective. Um, she's extraordinarily progressive and we need more voices like Avril's. Um, I suppose for me as a female, is that a welcome back? Um, that's <laughs> that's <laughs> uh, that is very much outside my um, um, my uh, my spectrum in yeah. in that context. But no, I mean uh, no, I mean. It's, she she is a a, lo- a loss in that context, and um, I hope that in some way she she will stay involved, um, in in the political spectrum. Um, I, do I think it was unfair? Um, yeah, yes, on I do. Party, yes, on yes, I do. Par- on the party, I do, and yeah. on the on I do. Particularly individual members. Partic- well, not in particularly on the on the on a localized basis on the individual members. The thing, the great thing about the referendum was, and th- people say this to me all the time. I mean, I have a personal interest um yeah. in the referendum, which is which is fine, yeah. um, but. The thing about the referendum was it was about wasn't about any party. It was mm-hmm. about the people. It was mm-hmm. about well, it was about us being able to go to our parents, our grandparents, our brothers, our sisters, our neighbours, mm-hmm. our cousins, our brothers, and say, that, you know, will you vote? Uh, will you vote? These are the reasons why we need you to vote yes. And it was a positive outlook and influence. I mean, I saw. I mean, Niall Collins and I always cre- like it was so undercredited with regard to the referendum. Niall Collins was our director of elections, and he's our justice spokesperson. Mm-hmm. And nobody worked harder than Niall Collins. Mm-hmm. He went from constituency to constituency to constituency, t- 
talking to members, talking to members on a rural basis. On a, you know, it's the re referendum sometimes I thought could be very Dublin centric. And mm -hmm. when you looked at the broader basis mm -hmm. of the referendum, that's where yes, the crux, the, that's where the kind of the hard work and the dedication is really mm -hmm. done. And you know, it was. I mean, I do think it was unfair on on members. I mean, I canvassed. I know there was you know ca there was councillors right across the co right across the county. You know, Di Rota, Paul McAuliffe, Catherine Arda, Jen Cuff, Kate Feeney. You know, very very active. Got mm -hmm. and but what we did was we all went and got involved in the local yes equality groups. And it was yeah. we were working alongside the Fine Gaelers, the Sinn Fein, the Sinn Fein guys, Labour guys, and you were enjoying that and doing that. So. Okay. Yeah, it was a, it was a tough. It was something that was tough to take. And yeah. from a female coming through the party, um, we only had two female parliamentarians at the time, and that was something that it was a loss for for young females coming yeah. through as well. Yeah. I do think. Yeah. Perhaps there was a backstory there that the general public. Who knows? Who knows? This is politics. Yes. Uh, so, uh, on uh, you got through on uh, Dublin. Uh, sorry, South Dublin Council. Um, even though you didn't get through uh, in the uh, the election, how do you feel about that? I I'll be honest. I have problems with the concept of uh, co-option in the sense that I I believe it's a democratic deficit. I won't put it any stronger than that. But uh, uh, if you do the work, I'd be happy to uh, to support the candidacy. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I think it, I mean the co-option process is it's not an easy process either. Mm -hmm. I mean the democratic deficit I think might be slightly addressed when you're going back to your own party to mm -hmm. try and actually advocate for yourself as a candidate. So mm -hmm. for me I had to decide whether or not that I would, you know, contest the convention for mm -hmm. um for, for the vacated seat. So but I did I mean we could be creating chaos upon I mean we've had six replacements yeah. on South Dublin County Council so far. Um if the Taoiseach's nominees go a, a certain way, we could have, you know, maybe one or two others that might go that might be co opted or might be sent to the Shannon on, on the Taoiseach's nomination. So we've already had six. So mm -hmm. to have to run six elect local uh, six elections again for uh, essentially by elections I think would be would be slightly chaotic. Yeah. But um, you know, I, I mean the co-option process. It's not easy being a co-optie. Oh, I wouldn't. I'm, I'm not blaming you. And, no, no, absolutely not. And and yeah. I understand. It. I mean, it's. I mean, previous co-opties have. You know, that would be long-serving members of on various councils came to me. You know, afterwards and said, mm. Emma, you know, this would be my advice as a co-optie. Mm. You know, because it's something that it's a it's a it's a tag that you have to hold on to until the next election mm -hmm. and where you're actually trying to you know hold on to your hold on to your seat or to gain a seat for yourself for the first time mm -hmm. so you know that it, it is a, it is a little bit of a, a cross that you have to mm -hmm. bear but um i think you know for myself i've had i see it as i've been two years out of the game sure. so i'm two years behind everyone else yeah, yeah. so I need to make up that time, yeah. so I need to work harder to make up that time, and I think most co-optees would take yeah. that approach. Can I put a radical proposal to you that I have sure. uh, that I have canvassed because uh, when I had a look at Dublin City Council of how it started, the last one, how sure. it started and how it finished, I think there was about a thirty percent change, uh, which to me it starts to lose its democratic mandate. Mm -hmm. So what I was proposing is is that we put in a trigger, twenty five percent change triggers an election. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I don't know how, sit, how the other sitting councillors might feel oh, about they wouldn't that. Like it at all. I don't think they'd but like that, it at all. But it might make the parties think, hold on, do we really need to, you know, we had three for one seat, I think, mm. in the North Inner City. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, like to, it, yeah. I like to see contested conventions, yeah. you know, there, you mm. know, there's nothing better than going and, you know, knocking on doors of members. I mean, mm. when I decided to contest the convention in, in, uh, in our area, in Raffarnham, I went to every single member. You mm -hmm. know, I didn't just you know take the you know the cap on nominations that I had. I went to every single member and I spoke to them, because I mean it's they're the ones that are you know party members. They're the mm -hmm. ones that are you know they're they're paying their party membership. They're the ones that you're representing essentially, um, mm -hmm. when you've got a party tag. Um, so I enjoyed I do enjoy that. You now the tea and the coffee and the biscuits are not are not good for my waistline, but no. I do I did enjoy going and knocking on the doors. And that's the part that you can address it in that sense. But um, yeah, your proposal now is slightly radical. I'm not sure if the Minister yeah. for Local Government would adore it, but um, yeah, it might Politici be to... Politicians never like radical proposals, but that's... <laughs> that's like, I yeah. wouldn't mind the door knocking, yeah. but now, anyway. Something I think we shared was, uh, I think you were on the Vincent Brown for Dublin South uh, Southwest, were you? I was in the audience. Yes, and, uh, and I was on the one for Dublin North, uh, mm. uh, Dublin Bay North. Now, people are saying that the one for Dublin Southwest was pretty much the low point in the uh, and the the, the series, what had been a fairly dynamic sort of productions before that it descended because it just turned into 
uh, an organised rabble of the audience attacking various people and half the people didn't turn up and the Labour Party I don't think turned up either. How did you feel the media covered that election? Uh, did you th feel you got a fair or did you get any coverage uh, worthwhile out of them? I suppose, you know, from from the media there to do their job, you know, they have a certain... Well, no, we're the stars. That's, that's, what, that's the way we see it. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's what I'm learning very quickly. But, um, you know, I suppose, I mean, the... the the t Vincent Brown type of programs, you know, as well. I mean, they're there to f serve a purpose, yeah. um, and sometimes the purpose can go can go yeah. left, it can go right, it can go centre. But I mean, I suppose if you do, from a media perspective, I mean, we were happy enough with our media coverage. But I suppose in general election context, you're not really focused on the media. So if you're focused on the media, you're not getting elected. I mean, you you get elected by knocking on doors mm -hmm. and talking to people and selling a brand and mm -hmm. you know the the mean it there again it's a, it's a necessary evil that has to be done you know I want, uh, this is something I'd be very interested to hear because you're a new generation of sure. politician. Um, there's an election coming up in Australia, I think it's the 2nd of July, mm -hmm. something around that. It's quite a long campaign by their standards. Um, they didn't they don't do posters or lamp posts anymore. Yeah. They don't do sticking stuff in letterboxes and going knocking on doors. Now that favours the major parties, there's no question it about favors that. favours candidates that have been there for a long time. Yes, oh absolutely, but it also favours candidates. It's generally a media campaign. Yeah. Are we behind or are we better off in that sense of the word? I do think we could do it better, you know, for somebody who works in international development and has a focus on sustainable development, yeah. I, yeah. the posters side of thing, it, it just, it does get out of control. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was seriously out of control this it, time, wasn't yeah, it? I mean, we had 22, 23, maybe 24 candidates in, yeah. in Dublin South West, and, like and you're jostling for poll space, yeah. and then they're coming down and they're hitting people, and they're, you know, following cars, and you're, mm. do, and you're cutting down the, the uh, the cable ties. So I mean, the, look, yeah. they look as a as a new candidate. Of course, they're as a new candidate and a, and yeah. a, a newer person coming through. Yeah, they are they are necessary. You know, yeah. in that well, it needs somebody to do something radically different and be successful at it. Doesn't I think it? I think and what, that probably requires money. I, mm, it does. I suppose one of the things, one of the initiatives that we've kind of seen come through now is you know that they we avoid the villages. Yeah. yeah. You know, avoid avoid the villages and and inside and towns and and that kind of thing so you're kind of keeping the village spaces and the town spaces you know poster free mm -hmm. and, and essentially then litter free um but you know i i, I would have taken you know mm -hmm. all of my all of my posters would have been numbered you mm -hmm. know that we would know where, where every one of them would have gone and That's i didn't i didn't get <laughs> i didn't get I uh, I think I lost. Um, I must ask my director of elections. I think I lost about forty percent of them. But um, yeah. you know, and I think because my dad kind of would have put up an awful lot of them, he would have taken you know personal you know well, taking great care, <laughs> yeah. taking great care. But also, you know, I know we saw two lads walking yeah. down with them crossing a bridge yeah. one day. He was like, "Where are you off to with that poster?" Well, um, that's but, a good sign because if the schoolboys nicked your poster, I mean, the most nicked poster in Dublin Bay North that I saw under schoolboys' arm was <laughs> Ava Power. Power. Although Deirdre Heaney's was the best poster. <laughs> Yeah, apparently so. But um, I, you know, I'd rather them stay on polls until after <laughs> after after election day. But um, um, but I've you know you see them being used for various different things, and you know we recycle them and that type of thing. So, you know, but it, I mean, I suppose it is something that we do need to look at. I mean, mm. they're ha maybe putting a restriction on the number of posters, mm. um, or the size of the posters, or something in that sense, because you know it is you know it's. Well, the 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 point I canvassed during the election is: has anybody ever changed their vote based on a poster? Yeah. I, I can't tell yeah. yeah. well, it, it, well, it, it may advantage the bigger parties so I think it also advantages women of course it can just you know so if you've got uh, somebody who's photogenic like yourself you know some of these I don't think that's I don't think that's a that's a just a, just yeah. on a female side yeah. I think that you know ah, there's some uh, ugly men out there oh. but but let's move on to gender politics Emma I mean I am uh, on record uh, of being a supporter of uh, increased female representation sure. and if the gender quotas is the only way to do that I'll settle for, for that at the moment but I think the, the point I raised at the um, at the election was that I interpreted the legislation to mean 35% representation not 35% candidates and everybody seemed to go for the minimum standard oh we got our 35% candidates or I don't think you actually did how do you let's start off first of all what's your view of uh, women uh, in uh, particularly more women in Irish politics I am um, I, I mean I, I'm all for diversity in, in politics I think you know of course we're looking for gender parity rather mm. than 
um, than anything else. I suppose my own personal feeling on gender quotas is that they're probably a necessary evil at the moment. Mm. Um, but personally, I'd rather be chosen on my quality rather mm. than what I have and what I have to bring to the table rather than my gender. So, um, the thirty percent, um, the thirty percent, of course, it, it was yeah. you know a challenge, but it was it, it, it was a challenge and it wasn't a challenge for for parties in that sense mm. as well. Um, it shouldn't have been, it shouldn't have been. No. but it also you know I mean one of the things that we should be looking at is you know the the number of young candidates coming mm. through as well and I mean that's something that I think that we do need as well you know new faces just and new I think new faces are needed and people from a diverse range of backgrounds and you know and a holistic diversity in politics rather than just based on gender. Mm. Um, 40% is going to be a 40% of the next general election is going to be a, a huge challenge. Yeah. I mean, we've brought, I mean, as a, as a party, Fianna Fáil have we have some excellent TDs that have come through, you know, uh, Anne Rabbit in Galway as uh, a new TD, uh, Mary Butler in Waterford, Lisa Chambers, who's uh, who, in Mayo, who um, who ran an amazing campaign to take a seat in the Thetis constituency. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know these are, are are fantastic female candidates, and that's only me naming. Uh, I could name one, five or six, but you know there's they're fantastic female candidates coming through, uh, are female deputies, um, and we've um, now Senator Catherine Arda, Senator Lorraine Clifford in in, mm -hmm. in Leinster and um, so I mean this is, you know, it it is a necessary evil. It has probably worked, but I suppose I mean the organisations such as Women for Election um, mm -hmm. are fantastic at the the work that they do. They have. Um, different programs that they would run for female candidates as well, mm -hmm. um, or or even females that want to work in the background. And I think for for me, for from a political perspective, one of the things that I would always advocate within our own local organisation is if you're looking for female candidates, you have to get females involved in the administrative organisational mm -hmm. side of the party as well. Sure. You know that it's not you can't be just plucking candidates and saying oh they make a good candidate. You know they coming through. I mean I got involved in the organisational side. And when I didn't get a seat in 2014, um, I became the chairperson of the local organisation yeah. in Dublin South West. And I would have been one of the only females in the country that would have been the chair of the local organisation. Um, but it, it gave me a huge insight into, you know, how things worked. Yeah. And I was the chairperson at the time of a general election, which brings its own challenges as well. So it's there's various different methods and ways of getting females involved but also getting young people involved yeah. and getting diversity involved getting like d diverse groups uh, as well involved in politics as well is that not and this is the interesting thing because i know a lot of young people i know a lot of young women and a lot of diverse people within Fianna Fáil and i'm just wondering is that somehow uh, requiring Fianna Fáil to change the tradition uh, it grew up in instead of being more tricolor it becomes more rainbow I don't, I don't think that's that's even necessary. I mm. mean, Fianna Fáil has always been at the forefront of, um, you know, of equality legislation. Equality legislation. I mean, one of the people you ask for people, people you ask earlier on is there somebody you'd look up to or, um, you know, value in a political sense. And I'd always say Maura Gagan Quinn, like the work mm. that she did, mm -hmm. um, in the nineties, um, for the decriminalisation of homosexuality was just immense. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't, I don't, I think it's. Uh, from a, say a media perspective, it doesn't come through to the forefront an awful lot, but I think it already exists. It's not something that really, you know, we need. It's not a change that would need to be made. It's just maybe something that we need to push yeah. more to the forefront. Yeah, one of the ideas that are one of the the, the, the thoughts that I've canvassed, particularly during the election, uh, is that austerity disproportionately affects females more than it affects males. Mm -hmm. In other words, because the females get to look after houses, mm -hmm. they're much more likely to be single parents, uh, women live longer, etc, etc. Do you think more women in politics would put more of a focus on those issues? Yeah, I, th I, I think so. Um, but I mean, I suppose I do, I mean, I do think that more women in politics is, it, it w it's necessary. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have more women in the door at this, um, in, at this time around, which is great. Um, but I mean, I suppose again, it's you know, I wouldn't like to be kind of pigeonholing in that sense as well. I mean, I have I have a brother who's a single parent, mm -hmm. and you know that brings its own challenges as well, and that's a, that's a different grouping as well. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's it's about kind of an an understanding, kind of an understanding of what can be brought right across the spectrum rather than anything else. And I suppose our electoral system allows for that. We've now moved away, as you can see, with the challenge with. Um, forming a government, um, that we've moved away from the polarized polarized system of two parties, you know, and and we've you know we have to be understanding PRS TV mm -hmm. and what that actually now means as well, mm -hmm. and that it allows for 
different people from different uh, from different backgrounds and diversities come through as well. Yeah. I'm going to save the best till last. Fianna Fáil are often seen as the party that would like to retain the eighth. Do you have a personal view on it? Um, I do have a per yeah, I have a personal view. Um, my personal view would be I'd be pro options. Um, I think that they I don't like the word repeal. I think it's um mm. it's um that it's something that it's it's thrown about and it, what does repeal actually mean so for it I, has to be replaced by something it has to be replaced by something to repeal means to abolish but there has to be a replacement there in some stage but the eighth amendment amendment is archaic and it's um you know it, it needs to be it needs serious serious consideration and serious serious uh, amending yeah emma, emma if you, i uh, announced you as a new voice for uh, fianna Fáil. you haven't disappointed so Thanks thank you for your time today. Me. What a thank you.